Welcome to live. It is a good chance to be together, and I'm here with my good friend and right hand man, Mr. Peter Stout. Good evening, everyone. So great to be with you here on another Friday night. Holy cow! I just checked the stream, and we had 299 people waiting. There are 322 nice. people in the stream already. You guys are crazy. You guys showed okay. up. Okay, here we go. Now we're looking. Tonight's going to be a fun night, and it's going to be a a special night too. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I'll tell you why it's going to be special um, in a bit. But who's with us, Peter? Who's here with us? I'm going right. to get this so, so I can see the chat. Yeah, holy cow. Chat is flying. We have uh, Chris Van Wick from Arizona. Um, Karen from – or Karen says Corpus Christi. Um, oh, cool. Yeah. Stacia says hello from Indiana. Trish from Alberta, Canada. Tracy Gordon is in the house. L, I think it's L, L or Ellie in North Carolina. We have Donna Ridgeway from Montana. Donna Mobley from Kinston, North Carolina. Holy cow, the chat is going so fast. You guys are amazing. A uh, dip from Kyle, Texas. A uh, Jackie from Mississippi, Okanagan, Wisconsin, Canada, right. Kentucky, Santa Clara. Yeah, holy cow. Super cool. Now, now this is why tonight's gonna be special, guys. Um, why I, I'm looking forward to it, and and I hope that it'll mean mean something to you also. Here's the deal. Um, so we run Acrylic University, and, and we are my wife and I, Renee, we have 17 nieces and nephews, and all of them are extremely precious, and we've loved them from the day that they were born, you know. Um, and and so it's been cool over the over the last couple of years, we've been able to have some different uh, family members actually help us and what we're doing and different things. And one of the people that has been helping us over the last, oh, I don't know, six, seven, eight months. I, I don't even know how long it's been exactly, but for quite a while is our dear niece, Alyssa. And so she lives with her husband in California and they got a little puppy. And this little puppy's name was Robin. And Robin was uh, like linked to Alyssa. They did everything together. They spent 97% of their time together and they loved each other. And I'll, I'll, you can see how cute, this is Robin right here, okay? You can see how cute she is. Just adorable little, little puppy. And um, here's a picture of her with Alyssa. And you can see that they, they just loved each other. They spent so much time together. They, uh, you know, I got to meet Robin when, when they were up visiting over Christmas. And she was just the cutest little puppy. And the saddest thing happened um, when uh, Robin ended up getting struck by a car and died and it's been really hard you know you guys know who have had animals that you love and that you care about is you they're part of your family right and so tonight just as a special um way that i might maybe hopefully be able to do something kind to to uh just support Alyssa and john in this time i just thought i'd do this little painting of their their puppy robin uh looking out the window now this is their puppy robin i took a little bit of liberty and i put a slightly different window in the background but this is a very real scene um that they would have seen so with their little puppy robin so anyways that is what is that's why we're doing this um and we're gonna have a good time and it's special and meaningful, hopefully, also. So, Alyssa, I hope you're here. I hope that um, I hope this painting turns out for one thing, or I'll see. <laughs> you know, uh, I'll, I'll I'll do another one afterwards, and I'll try to get you a good one if this one doesn't turn out. But I'm starting with a a blank 
canvas. This is this is actually um, a Jessa board. This is a Jessa panel. It's this right here, DaVinci Pro panels. It's it's kind of a MDF stretched or uh, with a panel on top. But on here, I've actually put on a couple coats of gesso. Um, they're very, very, very smooth panels. And I, I just wanted to have a little bit more tooth on here for tonight. And uh, so I, I did a little bit of gesso on there. Now, if anybody has a question, feel free to shout it out um and say hi i'm going to be painting but peter is here and so if you have a question hopefully we can see it and uh and i'll do my best to to answer so welcome 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 we're so so glad to have you so i'm going to like i said i'm starting with a blank white a lot of times i'll tone my canvases first and that kind of thing but i kind of wanted to start without anything on here because i i wasn't exactly sure what what i wanted to tone the the canvas and i wanted also to kind of have a little bit of um now this is this is just kind of like water but it's just a little it's got a little color from washing my brush off before um but it's pretty much just i'm just kind of getting this wet and then i'm gonna start um here let me get that reference photo on there for you um so hopefully you can see it at least a little bit but i'm just gonna start putting in some um some colors and some shapes and stuff kind of as i see it and I'm going to just start building it up kind of slowly. We'll see how this goes. But I'm just planning to to keep it kind of on the loose side right now. And... Just my colors, so you know, I have cadmium yellow light. This is, well, this is quinacridone uh, magenta. In here is, this is a cadmium or maybe a naphthol red right there. This is ultramarine blue. So I do have two reds here. And this is phthalo blue, but I, I don't know if I'll dip into that or not. And then I have titanium white. Uh, black and this is actually cadmium yellow deep it looks almost like cadmium orange and uh, sometimes that happens just depending on the brand they can they can change kind of the way that they look um, another version it might look a little less uh, it might be lighter but that one is a pretty dark version of the cadmium yellow deep and i i like this scene i i am not I, somebody asked me i got an email today from one of our members and they said did i see that you were going to be painting i thought you were painting a uh, an animal or something tonight a dog or something uh they they got confused because they thought i was doing it during the day when we had our we had a workshop and diana did did a great job wasn't that awesome peter i i oh heard yeah that was in, it went so well it was incredible yeah oh that's so great like yeah, always I, man they're always i so know good. i know i know it's you get spoiled with somebody like diana around don't you it's like yeah, you really do <laughs> you really do she's amazing guys as, yeah. as you all well know I'm sure a lot of you were there this morning yeah. um terry rose says very respectfully thank you for letting us know the colors 
Oh, and yeah. um, also, the painting looks so good already. Well, thanks. Uh, it's always funny when you have a good start to a painting. Has anybody out there ever had a great start to painting and then got totally scared to move on? <laughs> yes. Because you're afraid you're going to mess it up? Yep. That used to um, happen to me all the time. Someone asks, uh, or Marion Fielder asks, interesting that you are not working on the background first. Why would you choose to paint the focal point first? Oh, well, you know, it's just, it's just a, a different approach. Um, and, and actually, I just had this, this great idea. Oh, my goodness. I, I can't believe that I didn't already do this because I forgot about it. But anybody who was here with us, last week um for our we had amy erickson on and she did this super cool um demonstration for us and she she painted a still life and it was up against a window kind of like this so it was kind of a similar scene totally different subject matter but the the atmosphere of the painting was was kind of similar and uh what what she did was I'll try to show you kind of <laughs> what she did, but she did a bunch of removing of, of paint and it was really cool. Like, I don't know exactly how she did every, every part of it. Um, but it was quite magical because she was basically drawing her painting onto the, the scene with her paper towel just taking off taking off paint rather than putting it on and uh it had the really cool luminous effect you know like just the way that the light could show through in that uh was was quite remarkable so i remember actually thinking about that earlier this week when i was thinking about doing this that was a big mistake that last one um, but you have a little time to to fix mistakes in this i forgot that i picked up some of that color i thought that i only had the lighter yellow but i want to get um want to make I, I guess i probably need to move him or her i mean Need to move Robin over just a little bit. Maybe make her ear come over a little bit further. Um, but you get this luminous effect with with that kind of painting technique because the the light is really shining through uh, behind everything. And uh, I had thought I need to do that for for this painting, but by the time I'd gotten here, I had forgotten. So I'm really glad you, that you asked the question, why am I not painting the, the foreground or why am I not painting the background first? Because it helped me remember. And if you've watched me much, you'll know that that's actually very, very common. I, I hardly ever paint the background first. I almost always paint the foreground first. And a lot of it has to do with the, the way that the painting will end up looking with, it's, it's the negative painting approach. um faith says this is the first time or this is the first time i've seen him paint my first classes on monday i'm so excited yes it's gonna be so fun the radiant master class starts monday yep if you are not signed up there is still time you can go to our website peter do you want to put that in the chat somewhere yeah that yeah absolutely i'll i'll put it up there for you guys just give me screen. one second but yeah, it's um, gonna be a blast. It'll be a total blast. We're good. To, we're glad to have you, Faith. Welcome. Yeah, super fun. Um, 
Angelus, is this the first time I've seen you paint? Do you always use a large brush for outlining or establishing the elements of the painting? I try. My general principle in painting is going to be paint with your biggest brush first for as long as you can. Um, because I just like more gestural, loose brush strokes. And so it kind of, it's, it's the easiest way in a, in a sense. If you only, if you force yourself to paint with a big brush stroke, you, you can't get um, too detailed with it. And, and I, because that's one of my personal goals, generally, uh, I, I kind of use that technique to try to stay loose as long as I can. Really good question though. I actually do think I'm gonna use a little bit of my phthalo blue here because there's some nice greens back there that are very light. Um, but I, I, I want them to be kind of colorful, even though they're light. Um, I'm a member. Do I, or I'm already a member. Do I need to sign up for the class still? Yes, you do. Yeah. Um, the, you can, you can show up right here actually on, for the lessons, they're going to happen on YouTube here. Um, but to actually register and to be eligible for the prizes and all of that kind of fun stuff, you really, yeah, to really get the full experience. To. Yeah. You really want to register and, and, uh, yeah. So good question. Connie asks, what kind of paint are you using? Watercolor or acrylic? This is acrylic. Yes. This is heavy bodied acrylic. Um, the brand sometimes switches with me depending on what I have in my, in my box at the time. But this is probably Windsor Newton. Um, and some Utrecht paint. And maybe this right here is probably Liquitex. But to me, I do care about brands of paint, but not as much as a lot of people may. You know, you might think about it more than I do. For me, it's, it's um, I found good paint in, in a variety of brands. And sometimes it just comes down to the actual pigment um, and what, what I like, but I do, I have said many times that I, I really started loving the way that the Windsor Newton, um, stayed, uh, the, the color stayed true. So it's called color shift in acrylic painting. And that means that the paints can change color when they dry. They generally tend to dry a little bit darker than when you first put them down. And so the Windsor Newton paint is actually formulated in a way that's supposed to be a little bit better for that. But um, uh, Ruthie says, I have a question about the masterclass inviting friends. I don't see a link to send them the info on it. Am I missing it or isn't there one? I see where you sign in and it says who invited you. Yeah, that's the one. Yep. Um, and if you want to invite your friends, you can just tell them to go to acrylicuniversity.com. Uh, or you can send them the link, acrylicuniversity.com, and uh, they'll be able to sign up right there. Maybe that's more accurate. Ah, I'm always trying to get the right lighting on here so that you see what I see. Need that to be lighter. But if you look at the the reference, what you see is that the the window panes are actually not the lightest thing. Kind of like when I rubbed it off, they became really, really light, but they're actually not as light as the outside. And there's kind of a top edge to them that is lit up by the sun.
I'm just using the side of my brush. Um, I find that sometimes I'm kind of rough on my brushes. Um, I, I, I don't know why sometimes, I mean, I, I'm not intentionally, but I just don't, I like to use them in maybe slightly unconventional ways. Like I, I, if I am only doing this brush stroke, um, it, it's going to be a little bit repetitive. So sometimes, you know, I'll turn it on its side or I'll make marks that are a little bit different just because that difference will make things a little bit more interesting. And I really love this scene. I love how the light is... Um, there's so much light in the scene. And to, to accomplish that light, I want it to, I want the whole painting to stay lit up well, but to, to kind of show the, the contrast, you still need a little bit of dark. You need a little bit of area that will, you know, kind of reveal that the lights are as light as they, as they are. And it's really always about that, its values. And some of these small areas here are probably enough um, to, to bring a little bit of that darkness in. And I might come in every once in a while also with, with a little bit of the, I've got a spray bottle here. And if I, if I want it to stay kind of workable and uh, blendable or get a little bit of kind of a watercolor effect, with wet into wet paint. Uh, I can always spray a little bit of this on there and achieve some of that. So I'm gonna bring a little bit of light in and start to see if there's enough contrast with, with the other colors that are in the back. You got these adorable, <laughs> adorable ears on Robin. We don't have a puppy. We have a, we have a kitten. We, uh, have a kitten that we bought or yeah I guess we did buy him now that I I mean it sounded funny when I said it but we did we paid for him um, at the very beginning of the pandemic it was right around Easter of 2020 and his name's Silver and he's almost as big as Robin he might be, I don't know. He's one of those cats that likes to, likes to eat and sleep and sit around and generally have a good time. In and cause life. trouble. And cause trouble. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you're not paying attention to him, yep. you will want your attention. I have so many good memories of like 
<laughs> working and stuff or doing whatever when he'd sit on yeah. my lap or on my computer. Oh, I know. I uh, know. Yeah, he'll still he still does that type of thing like where Renee came in last night and sat down and he just jumped right into her lap and you know mm. wanted wanted to be petted and loved. Yep. Um, Deborah Baker asks, how do you keep the paints on the palette from drying out? Okay, so good question. Now, this is this is a special, it's called a Masterson palette, and it looks like this. This is the bottom part. It's a plastic uh, box. It comes with this lid that um, snaps into place. You can see it's got grooves so that it will keep the keep the moisture out and you can maybe barely see the name here. I don't know. I always like feel like this, <laughs> see if I can make it so you can read it, but it says Masterson here. Um, anyways, it's a Masterson palette and it comes, you can get this kind of sponge that goes underneath this special paper. Now you can substitute paper towels or something like that, but this paper is a, it's kind of a special paper that is permeable and it, it soaks up the moisture from the sponge and it keeps these paints wet for a long time. And yeah, if you know, that's one of the hardest things. Um, if you don't have that happening, the paint dries up very quickly. You have a very limited amount of time that you can paint or mix colors. But when you use this kind of system, you can, yeah, I, this paint has been on this palette for a, a couple weeks. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it really lasts a long time, at least a week. I did, I probably did something, maybe put out some new colors on some of it last week, but it's a, it's a great system and it totally changed the way that I was able to go about painting in acrylics. Um, Beverly O'Donnell asks, I missed whose puppy this is. So it's one of Jed's nieces and uh, she also works with us at Acrylic University. So Yeah, Alyssa. Yep. Yes. I'm sure a lot of you have interacted with Alyssa in some form or another. Yeah, if you, if you email us, you'll probably, <laughs> you'll, you'll know. And she's super, super nice. I mean, she's she's incredible so we're super thankful for her and and very sorry about robin yeah it's like i was saying earlier i know we've had other other members who've lost a animals or pets and uh it's always heartbreaking you know it's it's just yeah yeah for sure one cool thing that happened today is i had a good conversation does anybody out there know michelle usabelli because we have interacted before. Uh, we were both in a plein air event a couple of years ago. She's an incredible artist, just so awesome. Um, and anyways, she is going to be joining us in April. For those of you who are members of Acrylic University, you can look forward to that and you should go and check out her work. So she's going to do a uh, demonstration for us. And the theme is going to be the colors of spring. And she's going to do a, she's going to do a, a floral still life. Um, and it's going to be awesome. It's going to be so good. I That's found one the of the, oh, oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Um, 
Yeah, just more conversation about the Stay Wet palette. Somebody says, I found the Stay Wet palette has also changed my working with acrylics. I no longer waste paint and keep mixtures on the palette. Yeah, it's it's really cool. It, it's, I mean, I, I can't imagine. <laughs> I don't think Jed could do what he does without the Stay Wet palette. Um, yeah. Zerka says, once you snap the lid back on, do you need to occasionally open it and spray the sponge layer beneath with water if you're not going to paint right away again? Yeah, sometimes the layer underneath dries out. But if it's snapped shut, this generally stays totally wet. The, the mm -hmm. thing that you have to be a little bit careful of is the, the moldy kind of smell that will happen and, and that kind of thing, which you you want to i mean generally you you can leave it in there there's a lot of different things you can do people will put pennies underneath the yeah somebody just said a penny has yeah. kept their thing yeah. from molding for a long time yeah yeah pennies um other people use um a drop of different things like there, there's a whole bunch of solutions and i swear i have ideas about things and then I think that it's a pretty good solution and it's, it is pretty good, but our members come up with all sorts of other stuff that I never had thought of. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So I'm going to see if we can get a little bit of, Maybe some of the nuance in in the it's a little bit of detail and a little bit more some of the coloration. I use generally flat brushes. This is a flat number, probably a number four or a number six. If you're wondering about that. Our daughter Willow tonight is at a gymnastics meet, which is pretty awesome. She's uh, highly involved in gymnastics. And when I mean highly involved, I do mean highly involved. I mean four times a week. It's kind of crazy. I, I Sometimes I think, are we just completely crazy or failing as parents to allow our 10-year-old daughter to do gymnastics four days a week i don't <laughs> know but she loves it and it's she loves real, it that's good oh she totally loves it in fact she hurt her foot a little bit this week she was doing something on some uh they do these exercises of course to try to gain strength and um mm -hmm. one of the things she was doing was on this what you, what do you like a pull up bar essentially? Um, mm -hmm. And she had, but she was hanging upside down, and she was, <laughs> I don't know what she was doing to be honest, but she was hanging upside down on this thing, and somehow like her friend was uh, wanting to use the pull up bar or something, so she got she, something happened where her foot kind of slipped, and she ended up banging her foot pretty hard on on a different metal bar or something mm. and caught a pretty decent bruise. You know, it, it wasn't totally swollen, but it was, it kind of was a little bit swollen. Mm. And she, you know, Renee, she's, I got a text from her right away. Oh, Willow did this. And I don't know if she's going to be able to go to the competition this weekend. And, you know, I don't know if she'll be able to do it. And, but Willow was like that night. She's, I think she was pretty determined. She didn't want to miss the competition. And I don't, I don't think it was as serious as what Renee thought at first, but mm -hmm. yeah, she's down there and she's, she's probably doing her thing. One of these minutes. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun to see kids enjoy something and and really like put herself in it what's weird yeah, totally. is how different she looks we were down a couple weekends ago at a different competition and 
and what was interesting was how how she um she changed like her composure the way like who she she's very light and bubbly and you know runs around and does all sorts of crazy things uh -huh. and then she's in this that and she was serious totally composed like 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 she was a performer i mean it was mm -hmm. it was like pretty amazing that's so cool she did really well yeah i want to go see one of her competitions or something sometime yeah that'd be cool so i'm just looking at the shading and kind of the values um i think that there's some some of this that that can be deepened up a little bit and and um I think it'll help bring out the highlights. How do we enter the master class? Is it free? Yes. Uh master class is totally free and you can join it just by going to acrylicuniversity.com. And uh, there'll be a big button you click, and uh, you can join the match class totally free. Invite your friends. Yeah, I got a I got an email from somebody the other day. I don't know how I can't think, find out how to pay for the master class. I was like, you don't have to. It's free. Totally free. Five days of world class painting instruction. It's gonna be so cool, and. Yeah, man, it's it's it is pretty awesome. Now I am seeing something here. Okay, this is what it is. I need to get this down a little bit more. So I'm gonna make a correction here where I feel like this comes down further. Um and I think it will be, it'll be helpful in the kind of like thinking about Robin's uh, body and shape and what it what it should look like. Um, the trick when you do a change and you're you know putting more I'm because I'm I'm basically going to be using more opaque colors here, um, and underneath there's still quite a bit of transparent colors and it's it's showing the texture a little bit differently and that's where you know just trying to figure out the the right way to get those things to blend and and the right amount of how much do you let the the underpainting show through how much do you want to cover it up with opaque colors all those kinds of things um they're they're good questions now I'm, I'm putting a little bit of blue in my lighter color over here and i might need to get out some more white i think i probably do but i feel like some of this is going to just have a little bit of a, a little reflected light it's it's a little bit catching a cooler light there. So we'll see how that looks. One amazing thing about paint is that if you need to, you can paint over it, you can change it. That's one of the things that changed in the way that I approached painting at some point was I started realizing after a long time and it took me quite a while to get to this place but i started realizing oh it's not quite as big of a deal as i thought you know like i i was overly worried about making a mistake for a long time or thinking that i wouldn't know how to fix something and and it was kind of true in that before i had you know, painted a ton, you know, or enough, I probably didn't know how to fix a lot of things. So there, there is something there, but what's really neat is 
every time you paint, you learn something. And they those little experiences actually add up faster than you think. And um, there's something about trusting yourself that is so important. And because otherwise you just never end up taking the risks that that will if you never take the risk you never try something new you never try something new you never learn anything different you know you never grow is in the end what happens so that's what i love about art is that it's so conducive to trying new things and you know learning and and because it's just not that big of a deal. It's just paint. Over on this side, there's a, I like this green up against the colors of Robin's head because it's kind of a pretty green color and It kind of offsets the a little bit more of a reddish color. And then it does get a little bit darker down there. So I'm going to see if I can put a little bit more color down here. And sometimes really what I'm thinking about is there's such an abstract quality to a background. I'm not thinking, I'm really trying to think about what does this look like um, as a pattern, not so much what does it look like as what is outside. Like I'm not thinking Oh, there's trees and there's this and there's this. I'm, I mean, obviously it is something like that. There's some sort of vegetation out there, but really I'm just trying to think about where does it, what does it look like to have these colors back here? Um, like what looks good and what, what doesn't necessarily make sense. And, you know, like, is there, is there a better color pattern? Like, should I have put that yellow color up there? Is that too yellow? All, all of that kind of stuff is what I'm thinking about more than trying to make it look like trees or, or something. I just, like the brush strokes and all of that stuff, to me, it's all about an abstract pattern. Um, someone asked if you were to get one, um, or if you could only get one size of Princeton Catalyst, what would it be? Oh, probably a, um, probably like a number six or a number, they, they don't have a, they don't have a number eight. I don't think I, at least I don't think I've been able to find one. So it goes from, it goes four, six in terms of what I use, I use four, six, 10, 12, 16. And so what would I use? It would either be a 10 or a six. If they had an eight, I would probably use an eight. The reason is because the, I, I feel like the, 
Um, the six is almost like a four. Like I'm holding, this is a six and this is a four. And they're, they're so close that, I mean, it's almost the same. And then when you jump up into the 10 and the 12, the difference isn't that big either. Um, trying to see if I have, I don't know. Well, this is a 10. Um, and the next, yeah, I can't find another, another 12. Oh, wait, here's one, I think. No, I've got a bunch of 10s, I guess. And then I have the 16. So just looking at these, um, it totally depends on the size of painting, really. But it, for, for this, I would say my, I would probably go with a number. Oh, man. I would probably go with a number 10. But that, that'd be on the big side a little bit. Just because, I mean, I, I could probably do it. It just, like a lot of this stuff, I'm using these this number six and number, uh, number four even on it. So I just feel like, it would just change the way that I approach it a little bit if I had the bigger brush. Now I've got to get a little bit more titanium white. Hopefully I can find some here. And I'm going to clean off a little bit of this because it's kind of dirty. And titanium white, I mean, any white really is one of the colors that I kind of like to have at least the ability to get it clean. Okay, well, let's see. So I see some kind of structural things with Robin that I want to, I kind of want to do a little bit better. And Yeah, I can't wait to uh, start Monday. It's going to be really fun. We've got three full sessions planned, and we always like getting your feedback. We, um, we took notes last time, and hopefully we will be able to make a few little changes. You know, we've actually got I, – I, I don't know if you guys know, but – I only listed three prizes on the on the registration page because part of it is like, I mean, I would have had to redo some graphics and stuff like that that 
that would have been a little bit of work. So maybe it was a little bit of laziness that made me not do it. But it was also like, I kind of want to have a surprise. And so there's actually two prizes that you guys don't even know about. So every time, basically, I'm just thinking almost every time we do a live event, like the, the three masterclass sessions, we're giving stuff away. And then we've also got a couple, um, like we're going to do a demo with Diana and me. We're going to paint together one time. And then we're doing a, the, the final celebration. And then there's a, another demo with, with me. Um, and then, uh, anyways, it's going to be so awesome. But like almost every one of them, it has uh, some prize elements. So it's going to be awesome, man. I, I love, I, I don't know. I just yeah, like, it's going to be incredible. I love, I love giving stuff. Away. I love, I love I the fun. Awesome. Like, remember when you did the trivia the other night and I was just like, uh huh. We should work some trivia into there somewhere. Yeah, totally. Um, Angela oh, Canterbury. Yeah, that... Oh, go ahead. Angela Canterbury. Uh, is there a special palette paper? Yes, you can just search. It should come with the palette, and then you can also just search Masterson palette paper. Um, yeah, and... it is. Yeah. Yeah, and then there's no um... substitute. That's all I wanted to say about that. I've tried tons and tons of other stuff to, yeah. to substitute, and. It's honestly, I don't think that there's anything else that works. Yeah. So you can try to find something else on your own, but I've tried wax paper. I've tried all sorts of stuff. And the whole thing is that the wax paper is the opposite of what you want because it, it is prohibiting moisture from going through the waxy part of it. Right. And so what you want is, I just don't know of anything else that's, that's quite the same. So out of all the elements, like this, I just have this sitting on a glass pallet so I can carry it around and take it out of the pallet box. Uh, there's lots of substitutions you can do, you know, um, but the paper is probably the only thing that I don't know of a substitute. Um, Karen. Uh, very positive comment. She says, you know, honestly, the masterclass being free is a gift in itself. Thank you very much. Oh yeah. Cool. No, I, I thank you for saying that. That's, that's fun. I, uh, I, I, that's a good way to think about it. I don't yeah. always think about that, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. Okay. Yeah, this is fun. I, 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 I can see why people get into painting pet portraits and stuff because it, it is kind of fun. Like, I've always thought that commissions are fun because you get to, you actually get to know people uh, when you're painting a commission. Like, you know, they're always wanting you to paint something that's meaningful to them. So you get, you know, you have these conversations and and things like that. And so. I can imagine that when you're painting a pet portrait, it's almost like the it's the same, and it's almost like you get to know two two people. Like you get to know the people, and then you get to know the animal a little bit at least, right? Like you get to see some of their personality and that kind of thing. So kind of fun. Uh, will the class on Monday be the 24th at 11 a.m. Pacific time? Yes, I believe so. Yep. That's the time. Mm-hmm. Um, is there something we should do to prep for the master class? Uh, yes. Make sh Well, actually, if you've signed up, go to your dashboard, and there are instructions there that yep. will you, tell you yep. what to do in preparation. So in the dashboard... dashboard. Go yeah. ahead. Do you have the dashboard will be super yeah I, I can grab it real quick the dashboard will be suit like all the recordings are going to be posted there during the class like extra information during the class is going to be posted there so just remember that the dashboard is your go-to place yeah uh, and the address for the dashboard peter is simply acrylicuniversity.com forward slash dashboard so it's really yeah. easy to find 
yeah now you can you can access that page if you haven't signed up guys so just make sure that you are signed up that you filled out that form on the page but i will link it you won't um, be able to get win a prize that's the that's the thing unless you're registered you miss out on all that fun stuff um Susie says how do you keep your palette colors from getting muddy as you mix colors well, I guess to, this is a, that's a great question. To some degree, I, I would suppose some people would think that they are muddy um, because they, they probably aren't as uh, untainted with all the other colors. But I use because I use a limited palette, like primarily I'm using one blue, one red and one yellow. I mean, even though in this I am using a, this thalo blue a little bit. Um, really the the colors if i need to clean them off i'll take a palette knife and scrape it but other than that i'm not worried about the colors mixing together because those nuanced grays and and all that kind of stuff adds interest in my frame of mind and it also is kind of um like I, because of the limited palette, I feel like you can't really create a color that is mud. It, it was actually a really eye-opening thing for me when I started using the the limited palette, um, and and I could talk on and on about that. Um, but it's it's definitely changed. It's another thing that's changed a lot of how I how I paint. So I'm not totally sure down here. I put in some of uh, that really light color, but I'm not 100% sold on it yet. I want to kind of keep looking at it right now. Deborah says I've only dabbled in watercolors, so acrylics are a whole new ball game for me. Yeah, and that that's the other thing, guys, is um honestly, like even if you don't have or don't plan on getting uh acrylics, you can still follow along in some ways and benefit from it, even if you're painting with oils or watercolors. Um, probably more so with oils than watercolors, but there's just lots of good stuff for any artist in uh in the master class. Yeah, that's true. There's a lot of the principles that we're going to talk about are, are really universal principles to art. Yeah. It's, it's uh, and, and also if you are trying to do it in acrylic and it's, you know, really early, or if you are a total beginner and you're, you're really wanting to participate and you're worried you're you feel intimidated maybe or something like that i just want to say um we're actually i haven't even told you this peter <laughs> but what we were thinking about doing is at the end of the demonstration uh, at least on day one we were thinking to 
for for people who want to ask questions or get a little bit more like a slower talk about certain aspects, you know, or if they felt like they got lost or if they're a beginner and they want to understand more about the tools that I'm using or anything like that, uh, we we actually are going to take a, a you know a little time to to address any of those questions that you might have. So we really know that it, it can feel intimidating. It can feel, you know, like you don't know as much as, you know, the person who's been painting for 20 years and, um, and, yeah. and we're going to try to, you know, help you feel really comfortable and confident. Yeah, with that. absolutely. That That's news to me, but I fully support that idea. That sounds like a, awesome <laughs> idea yeah because we we have a lot of we have a big mix of artists and uh yeah, it is. a lot of posts in the group so far like we've seen a few people that are like oh i feel so overwhelmed there's so many like you know people been painting for 20 30 years or whatever and um yeah. we don't want it to be uh we don't want you to feel excluded or anything like that you're still welcome there and we'll try to uh do our best to make sure that you have a, a good time with the class so yeah And I, I really think you will. I mean, it's it's a it's not. I don't think it's. I don't think anything that we're covering will be will be. You know, I think it's equally intimidating a lot of times for people that are more experienced than you. I think sometimes um, if you just come in with the attitude like, "This is okay. I, I can do this." It's it's going to be helpful because we all are kind of the same. I've, I've taught a lot of workshops and, and you don't really realize it, but almost everybody that goes to a workshop or shows up for one of those things comes anxious and they come feeling a little bit intimidated and they come feeling insecure. And so you might be thinking it's because you, you haven't been painting very long, but there, there, I can guarantee that there will be other people who've been painting for a long time and they're going to feel the same way. And I'm the same way too. I mean, I, I feel like, um, you know, we all have fears. I mean, just, just think of this guys. Okay. Just, just to put it in perspective. Um, I have to do demonstrations in front of hundreds of people. <laughs> like I, I get intimidated by that too. So we're all kind of in it together. Let's just, be courageous and and do our best and and that's all that we can do right and we'll have a good time doing it so i'll admit i'm scared you can admit you're scared and we'll just say who cares we're all scared let's just do it together <laughs> I, I love that um and yes comparison is the thief of joy that's right we don't do that here that's right Okay, so I'm just kind of, I'm, I'm stepping back from my painting. Um, you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm, I'm looking at, I'm really just thinking about the values of, of uh, you know, as they relate to, like from, from my painting, I'm looking at the painting and I'm looking back at the reference photo. And I'm just seeing where do these values line up well? Are there places that they need to be adjusted?
Okay. I'm going to grab a different blue and the ultramarine for a second here. I'm going to see, again, I'm thinking about this section right here. It seems like there's the darkest, the darkest value in the background is right in here. And So, seeing if I can work a little bit of that in there, make it a little bit darker, and then try to bring it back to be a little bit lighter as it goes up. Now, the thing that's so um, kind of interesting, I'm just like thinking about the, the way that the, the photograph, the reference photo is compared to the, the painting. And one of the differences is that the background is very blurry and the puppy is the main part that's and the, and the sofa is the main part that's in focus and everything else is pushed back quite a ways and so i'm going to see um i'm going to see if there's anything i can do to to do a little bit of or make it look a little similar this is a little bit tricky because I've, I've, um, I've let the paint dry back there. So if I do anything here, it's going to be mostly just dry brush work, that kind of thing. Um, and Hopefully I can accomplish something along those lines. So I actually might grab a second brush. And again, all I'm really trying to do here is just make these edges really soft. So I think it might look nice if, if it is kind of a blurry, blurry background. And I'll, I'm trying to see if I can get a little bit of that blurry effect over the edges of the windows too to, to see if I can soften that part. Uh, someone asked, how long is the master class on Monday, 11 to 1, question mark? It'll probably be something like that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I the the goal will actually be to be done um, in an hour and a half with everything. But then if you want to stay after the uh, – for the question time, like if you have, you know, more specific questions for me. Yeah. Uh, or you're wanting to get that part, that'll maybe go a little bit longer than that. But yeah, should be done by 1230.
Good question. And if you can't stay for every part of it, you know, like um, you can catch the replays. We're going to put those on the dashboard. So you'll have opportunities to watch things. Even if it wasn't, isn't live. I know a lot of people work and, you know, maybe are going to be able to watch some of it over their lunch break or different things like that. But I know that it, it might be unrealistic to think that you'll be able to catch the whole thing. And that's understandable. Okay, well, I feel like um, I feel like we're getting some good progress. Yeah. I feel like we're almost getting to the place where we can be can be done for now. Sometimes the best thing to do when you're in the process of painting something is to take a little break when you think or when you can't think of anything specific to do take a tiny break and, and, and look at it more closely and spend a little bit of time away from it so that you can have fresh eyes when you come back and look at it. And often you'll see those little things that you weren't able to see right in the middle of the, the, the painting. Um, we can we answer a few more questions, Jed, before we... Yeah, end? absolutely. Awesome. So, uh, Ginny asks, does anyone know when we get our reference photos for the master class? They are on the dashboard right now. You can go look at them. Yep. So, just go to acrylicuniversity.com forward slash dashboard, and you'll see all the... If you scroll... The, like, the first lesson is at the top. You can see all the reference photos from that right up at the top. But if you scroll further down, you'll also find the reference photos for the, the second and third lesson. And I'm going to be painting um, the first one. Basically, you'll it'll be the first one that you see in, in each of those sets. And then we're also going to, because Diana and I are gonna be painting together some uh, and then we're both going to do a, our own demo like the following week. Uh, we're going to work through most of those paintings or most of those reference photos. So you can choose to do anything else. You know, if you, I know somebody was texting me or, or asking to see, they wanted to see because they wanted to find some of their own reference photos that were similar because they, they thought that they had enough to, to work through on their own from their own photos, but they wanted to have the general feel of what to look for. 
So you can do that. You can use ours. It doesn't matter. Any other questions? Was there another one, Peter? Um, I'm looking through the chat right now, trying to see okay. if there's ones I missed. Oh, okay, gotcha. Martha, does anyone, does Jed or anyone use a hair dryer and are there concerns about how that dries the paint? Yes, Jed uses a hair, you'll probably see him during the master class. He'll turn his mic off for a second to use a hair dryer to dry his uh, painting. Yeah, I do fairly regularly. I don't in every painting all the time, but yes, I absolutely do use a hair dryer. And there's nothing I've ever noticed about how it dries that would be, um, something to be alarmed about in my opinion now if you are drying it really really fast and you're painting over it really really fast you might find that it's tacky or certain things like that but i think that the the way that it dries is just uh fine like i don't have i've never really had any any problems it's just kind of nice every once in a while to do something a little bit faster so Christine Spencer, love this came in late. Will it be available later? Yes, this should stay on the channel. Uh does Jed ever use a medium when painting? Um sometimes, but very rarely. Like yeah. nothing on this has had a medium. Yep. But the thing that I love is, you know, acrylics are such a, it's just such a marvelous medium. And I feel like you can do so much. And that's one of the big reasons that we do what we do is to encourage people who use acrylics and to show people just how, you know, fun they are and how free you can be with them. I, I, I really feel like, um, there's so much you can do uh, uniquely in the medium. And, um, and it's, it's fun when other people catch some of that and, and can, you can really see people take off in their, in their use and ability. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, will the masterclass be on YouTube or Facebook? The live streams will be on YouTube. So uh, if you haven't, be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications so you get notified when we go live. We'll also have texts going out, emails going out. Um, but the live streams will be on YouTube. All of the community aspects like the sharing your paintings, seeing other people's paintings, commenting on paintings, uh, updates, all that stuff. That all happened on Facebook. Yeah, you can go right now. If you if you go to, a, to a YouTube.com and you do forward slash Jed Dorsey, you can see our channel and all the live streams are actually already on there. So you can set the alert button and all that kind of stuff. And you will know that you're, uh, you're not going to miss anything. If you're on, if you're registered and you're on our email list, if you are on my text alert list, you already will know, like even tonight I sent you guys, a text alert so you're mm -hmm. you're not going to miss out there's I, I really feel like if you miss out it's it's mostly because you didn't try very hard at all because <laughs> like we're, we're really trying to make it so that you if yeah. you want to be here you're gonna yeah you you would actually have to intentionally not yeah uh, you'd have to try to miss it yeah you'd have to try to miss so that that's our yeah. goal is to make it so that 
it's very easy to find, very easy to access. Yeah. And if you go, so just to kind of clarify what Jed said, if you go to our YouTube channel, there should be a section that says upcoming live streams. And right there, we have every single stream that'll happen scheduled. And you can click set reminder and it'll give you a reminder when it starts and uh, all that good stuff. So, And then if you uh, have uh, notifications on for the channel, uh, depending on what the push notifications are like on your phone, then you also get a notification on your phone from YouTube. And uh, oh, yeah, cool. so lots of uh, lots of ways to make sure you don't miss it. I don't know if I knew that about the oh oh if you have YouTube on your phone, is that what you're saying? Yeah, if you have it on your device and you have push notifications oh, enabled, cool. yeah, from YouTube, then it'll oh, send. Really cool. It should, if you have set reminder, it should send a reminder to your phone. Yeah, uh, push nice. notification. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Very cool. Someone says, by the way, just take a picture of the palette. It's an amazing abstract. I know. Oh, his, yeah. his palettes turn into some super cool, just beautiful, like, yeah, abstract. That's a good word for it. Abstract works of art all on their own. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's pretty interesting for sure. And we have had somebody else. I, I remember somebody at a workshop, I think somebody one time wanted to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I let him. I'm pretty sure. I was like, yeah, I don't care. Okay, guys. Well, I feel like um, this is at that place where I, I, um, I'm going to let it sit for a minute. I, I feel pretty, pretty happy with this little Robin. Little Robin's in puppy heaven right now, but mm -hmm. hopefully Alyssa, this will be a, memento for you that you can have on your wall or put somewhere that you'll be reminded of all your good times together because I know you had a lot. Okay. There it is, guys. There it is. Okay. Who's ready for the master class on Monday? Me. Me. That's me too. Me. me too. Super ready. Yeah, you guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, we are thrilled and totally uh, just getting, I, I don't know all the words that I could say. The first word that came to my mind is jacked up. Yep. Pumped up. <laughs> over the top we are going to have such a good time and so thanks for being here and uh peter do you have any final words for everybody before we say adios i don't think so um other than thank you guys for being here we had like over 500 people for most of the stream that's crazy um awesome. so yeah thank you guys uh we love you all and uh, we will see you next time thanks for